welcome to Forbes India's Path Breakers. I'm Neha Bhotra. Today my guest is Dr. Rana Durai, the Moon Man of India, as he's fondly called. He's the man responsible for Chandrayaan 1, Chandrayaan 2, and Mangalyaan. He helped India join ranks with USSR and USA at a time when India was not reckoned to be a power in the area of space science. We speak with him today about these missions, about the challenges, about life in the universe, and whether we can have human colonies on Moon and Mars. Dr. Anandurai, thank you so much for joining us here. It's good to have you in a lab that is uh, processing uh, satellite uh, units, am I right? Oh, yeah, yeah. So it must be so familiar to you. How does it feel coming back to something that is so closely connected to space and spacecraft? Yeah, it's really around 36 years. I was part and parcel of the satellites making, various type of the satellites. And now beyond even ISRO also, now the India is ready to embark being the spacefaring nation and I'm really really happy to be part of uh, that journey next journey sure so we'll come to that in just a bit but let me take you back in time let me first talk about Chandrayaan 1 Chandrayaan 2 Mangalyaan yeah, yeah. I think these are your signature missions to the moon and Mars and something that really put the spotlight on India so long you know other countries hadn't really thought India to be capable of these accomplishments but under your leadership we actually made a mark on that front we were doing the unthinkable, so to say. What were some of the challenges you faced? Problem solving, that would be of a totally different level. Yeah, if you can take us through that. Yeah, it's really, really a, a good journey. If you're looking back, mm -hmm. even when I joined in 1982, it was a very, very modest uh, baby steps only taken by ISRO. So looking at that, uh, elsewhere people are doing the satellite, we are launching, we are only, basically we are trying to operate. Mm -hmm. So looking at that, what can be done in this thing? I was thinking about that and I scribbled a note, the mm -hmm. possibility of a, a software satellite simulator, okay. uh, just a few weeks of my joining in ISRO. Mm -hmm. And uh, then uh, uh, Director ISRO Satellite Center, Professor Rao, mm -hmm. uh, within a matter of two days. This okay. is this I given for Friday evening, Monday morning I am getting my table. Uh, if you are ready to do it, this uh, whatever you are suggesting is okay. And uh, provided you are ready to take the responsibility and do, yes we will do, he has given. And I given a good budget and I given resources. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we did like that, then the next responsibility I was sitting and next promotion came. Mm -hmm. So that means when you are ready to do a challenging thing and the people are ready to support you, people are ready to recognize you. So that's how very, very modest baby steps we started. But it gave the courage to go much beyond, 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 beyond. Like sure. That, yeah. So tell us a bit about Mangalyaan. I think that has been one uh, mission that has got India so much uh, respect at the global level. How did we achieve this? What went behind it? Uh, also the fact that this was a very time-bound project, uh, a very uh, small-scale budget we were working with. So how did you work around all these challenges uh, to deliver success? Because that is what matters at the end. Yeah, yeah ISRO is also required to have challenging mission. Mm -hmm. And that way, first ever such managing mission was Chandrayaan 1. All right. So though we are the 70th mission to go to the moon, we made a path-breaking discovery of water and the reserve mm -hmm. molecules in the moon. Similarly, between Chandrayaan 1 and Chandrayaan 2, mm -hmm. there was some setback we, uh, way in which our progress was going on. So at that point of time, there was called for a mid-core correction. But still, we had a good number of hardwares mm -hmm. which were made to go to moon. Mm -hmm. I think then a freak idea came. Uh, so like Chandrayaan 1, what we have gone to the moon, mm -hmm. the similar path, whether we can take, go to the Mars. All right. I think that is the uh, just idea sparked. But as rightly told, even for the uh, developed countries like uh, uh, USA or Russia or Japan, even European countries, they also made so many attempts really to make the first ever success for each one of them. Mm -hmm. But in that context, we are, we are supposed to reject the hardware, which is supposed to go to the moon, to modify to Mars. This was really, really a tall order requirement. And that too, from the time when we told, yes, we can go, to where we have to go, it's only 14 months were available. It was really a tall order with respect to schedule, with respect to budget, with respect to technology. Mm -hmm. But still, I think we took his challenge. And when we made the mission, September of next year, 2014, 
when we occurred around the um, Mangalyaan, around the Mars, mm -hmm. I think we are the first ever uh, country to make such a feat in a first attempt with a very, very modest uh, thing. So this uh, re-triggered the imaginations of the Indian youth. Sure. Not only Indian youth, commercially also, uh, Indian space program has been looked upon by the other countries. So that, that gave us a yeah, lot of uh, footholding. Mm -hmm. We could launch good number of satellites for other countries in commercial terms. All so right. that way, uh, Chandrayaan Mangalyaan missions uh, gave a phase to uh, Indian space program, mm -hmm. gave a phase for Indian science and gave a uh, good, for the youth, a pedestal. Yes, we can do in India itself. Absolutely. So, as we speak, how does India fare when it comes to India's place uh, on the table with all these Western countries, uh, China included, um, that seem to be going very aggressive on space discovery. How is India managing this? Because I think it will have a direct bearing on world order as well, considering that space missions will have a huge role to play as far as the overall um, Geopolitics situation is also considered. Uh, would you agree? Yeah, I agree. Space provides a various dimensions. In first two industrial revolution, India could not reap its benefits. But in the space revolution, we cannot lag behind. We cannot be mere spectators. So that way, I think we entered and we have done reasonably well. Uh, coming to the uh, how the space can be used as a vantage point, mm -hmm. can be used for back to the here, mm -hmm. for the farmer, the fisherman, and even for the border security. Uh, even weather forecasting, navigation, for very many things, uh, natural resources of the uh, earth, sure. for very many things point of view, uh, the, how the satellites can be used. For that, I think I can tell you, Indian space program is very, very pioneering uh, things we have done, where India specific requirements point mm -hmm. of view. With the given budget, what we have delivered is really uh, uh, across the world, people definitely uh, acknowledge that. Beyond this also, the, the world order, geopolitical point of view, mm -hmm. space also will play a role. Technologically, I think we are uh, as good as anybody else uh, today's uh, space programs are concerned. Yes, sir. I think it's been about 60 years since the whole space program has flourished. You did mention that India has a certain advantage when it comes to launching satellites. And you have displayed expertise itself yeah, when yeah, it comes yeah. to remote sensing satellites, etc. And that has played a huge role when it comes to our defense, when it comes to uh, helping our farmers. Yeah. But what are some areas where India needs to do more to make its mark in the space program? I think it's a very, very good question. At this juncture of uh, the space program going across the globe, uh, now sure. you look at here, the gone are the days you have to make a bigger satellite, bigger launch vehicle. That I think slowly, slowly phasing it out. Mm -hmm. Now everything is a small and smart. And uh, now we have the good number of uh, the small satellites, huge numbers. Uh, by actually during the last three years itself, more than 3,000 satellites are launched to the space. Okay. Uh, that, that is for the giving the global communication point of view. But now, once this operational happening, thousands of satellites are working. Uh, but definitely each one of the satellites has its life limited uh, things are there. Mm -hmm. Once the life is over, we must be able to replace it at the earliest. Sure. And uh, towards that, we need a small launch vehicles. Small launch vehicle capable of uh, small satellites on demand. I think we have a geographically very good place in India, southern part of India, close to uh, From there, and we are coming out with this, our own small satellite launch vehicle. Recently it got a setback, but soon we are able to come out of that. With that combination, uh, we will be able to give on-demand launch, 24 hours notice, theoretically possible. Beyond this row, good number of startups and private industries are coming, academy also coming. If you are able to arrive at an ecosystem, in and around Kula Sagara Patinam, that on-demand we can launch satellites, not only for our own nation, there is a very, very, very good opportunity having for the younger generation, the new startups. Indeed. So when you talk about startups, uh, and many of them are working in collaboration with private companies, um, what's your sense? I mean, India has a young, vibrant population, and there are a couple of space tech startups yeah, that yeah, are yeah. mushrooming as well. Um, you've interacted with some of them. Correct, correct. What's your feedback? No, my feedback is definitely their enthusiasm is good and uh, de definitely they will be capable of doing it also. But what calls for is to have a really a vibrant ecosystem which can take these people together, connect everybody together, uh, such that we have an end-to-end -end solution. Let everybody take this, that slice of the cake. The cake is very big, making the satellite systems, making the satellites, and uh, testing the satellites, 
making the launch vehicle system, making the launch vehicle, launch it, post launch how to operate. That's another big, big business. Okay. So, so you know, when you talk about space tech, there are a lot of startups in that area and we've interacted with a couple of them. Yeah, it seems yeah. that funding is a problem. So how do you think they can work around that? Because they seem to have very good ideas, yeah. but the gestation period of these projects is long and there's also a high requirement on the capital front. We expect the demand both within country and as well as outside keep coming up. And this can be taken by the Indian new entrepreneurs are coming. And towards that, I feel Indian space policy, whatever coming out, will be able to do some sort of hand-holding. And towards that, in ISRO's state of the art infrastructure, they will be able to use almost free of cost, almost. So that, that is the initial thing is coming there. So initial investment to make a big infrastructure may not be called for. Uh, their ideas and the technology if put together, uh, I think the infrastructure is available with them and the potential market both nationally and internationally is available. So provided they are competitive enough, definitely it's possible. The images that we saw coming in from the James uh, yeah, yeah. Webb telescope, it's astounding. The universe is infinite. What scope of discovery do you see from these images that have come in? Uh, this James Webb which is nearly more than a decade old project, uh, it has come out very nicely and sure. it has been the initial testing. It has various modes, nearly 30, 35 types of modes of operation possible and that's all being tested out one by one. So it, it's able to show uh, this uh, bigger telescope how far it can see. That means how fidelity it can uh, see that point of view. Another thing is also across the spectrum. Across the spectrum, it's able to resolve what sort of a chemical and molecular systems they are seeing into the space. So this combination, they are testing it out. This uh, picture is what you are trying to show. How far it is able to see and how uh, finer it is able to see and how finer it is able to dis resolve the chemical compositions in the uh, vicinity of the planetary system. Mm -hmm. So that way it is able to see how the, uh, the stars are getting uh, uh, evolved. One thing and, and the death of the star system happening there and planetary systems whatever happening there elsewhere sure. and the planetary system do you have water do we have the chances of methane do you have other chemicals available which probably can give a, a chance an opportunity for the new life form to come or the new life form being available so this way i think the whatever what is the amount of data is going to come in the uh, years to come it looks very very encouraging looking at the initial uh, the char characterization of the systems when they do we have seen exoplanets but exoplanets do have life form available and uh, for that it's anything is can uh, possible we expect a very very interesting uh, results and discoveries and the new openings in the science. Mm -hmm. So what I find very intriguing is that only a few decades back, we were so centered on human colonies on the moon. In fact, we were very confident that we will have human colonies on the moon. But yeah. now there's a lot of focus on Mars. Is there um, any way in which it can help human civilization flourish on Earth? The humanity has to improve upon. That's how humanity graduated from the caves Today when we are talking about Moon or Mars, that's how America has come, that's how Australia has come. It was not habitated ages back. But now without America, without Australia, I think you cannot think about in the whole world. Same is the case, now I, I, I will tell the beyond continents people are spreading. I think the extended Earth is a Moon and the extended Earth and Moon is a Mars. So that way I look at here, the human exploration, whatever we are doing is beyond seas we have seen. Now beyond the space we are seeing, there is only extension. So that way it is, uh, uh, it is a natural course, uh, human seeing uh, extra places what we, can, uh, what we can make our presence felt, uh, that is required. But to do that, what required technologies? I think that is what we are seeing. We are travelling, you came from Mumbai to Bangalore, uh, matter of time, uh, just like that, any other travel happening. It would not have happened for ages back. But now it's happened to that. But technology evolves. Similarly, the space travel also will evolve. An extended Earth in Moon, extended Earth in Mars, like our uh, continent, 
we are many, many of us there in Indian continent, but many of our brothers and sisters are there in US continent. Yes. But we are, we are uh, by space, we are uh, connected. I think that way this also will happen. So it's only a logical extension, uh, space exploration. Mm -hmm. But uh, are the conditions suitable, conducive for mankind to flourish on moon, on Mars? We've grown up believing that you need oxygen and yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, is it even conducive to support life formation? No, it is not very much conducive, but it is not totally uh, hopeless because when discovery of water on the moon uh, makes a lot more things can be done there. So keeping a water as a, a resource, uh, it can make the atmosphere possible. Making hydrogen, you can make uh, your, uh, your energy is possible. For example, now we have the uh, next generation of nuclear uh, vision based systems are coming up. So definitely a moon can source the helium-3 isotopes back to Earth. Mars, I think, reasonably well, but still we can, technologically, we can make it the things better way. So that way, putting together that, Moon and Mars, I think, if there is a need, technically, man will be able to make it uh, a habitable planets. So can they grow food on Moon and Mars? I think it's, why not? Because already, already, you know, uh, it's, it's not uh, uh, very far away. Uh, being pulses, being tested in the moon-like environment here. Yeah. Okay. I mean, even en route to the moon or en route to the Mars, also such a thing is possible, people have seen. So that way, uh, this, uh, whatever the research is going on, mm. for the agriculture, what you can do in agriculture in a space, mm. okay, that I think, where, where the, it can feed back to the earth also, where the resources like, uh, uh, minerals, water resources being less. I think uh, India's recent uh, unmanned mission, uh, Gaganyaan, is very promising. The first of its kind in India? Yeah, yeah, India, India, the Indian, Indian defense. We have, though Indians have flown to the space, but they are using the either Russian ship or American uh, shuttle they have moved. But this is going to be a, by, from Indian soil, uh, Indian capsule taking Indians to the space. Mm -hmm. So indeed, uh, you know, Gaganyan brings me to the next uh, area that is so fascinating, that is space tourism. Is it something we can see in our lifetimes, people traveling to the moon, coming back, going to Mars, coming back? Is that yeah, something that going to the is near real? Going to the near space and coming is already started happening going to the near space and coming elsewhere happening. Gaganyan also will uh, prove that. Then it's only a logical extension uh, uh, that's possible because uh, people are traveling across the globe possible. Similarly, space travel uh, for the humans, we are technically we, we make it uh, available. So then the feasibility of having the space travel deep into the space and coming back is reasonably good. But how about Mars? I think Mars is uh, further away from the moon, yeah, yeah. longer distance. Yeah, yeah. I think it takes over a one year to travel to Mars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How real is that? We have SpaceX, we have yeah. Musk who is devoted to this cause. Um, yeah. Give us your view. How real is it traveling to Mars and coming back to Earth? Yeah, towards that I think uh, reasonably good experiments have done. Okay. Travel to the Mars it takes nearly 9 to 10 months. Going to the Mars is not a very much difficult thing. But the question is how to bring them back. Yeah. I think today's technology, yes, per today's technology point of view, it's, 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 it's not possible. A good number of people, youngsters, they were ready to go to the Mars on a one-way trip. <laughs> so, to and fro to Mars as possible. But for that, someone has to go to the Mars. Based on the current knowledge that we have, how long can Mars support life? I mean, if someone from Earth were to travel to Mars, how long can they live? Okay, this is basically, this is what is happening is, uh, one is when, when they go over there, they should make a, their own, already they are discussing, already it's a good amount of training is going on. Is it possible for them to make their own habitat there? So, engineering habitat, okay? So, like, like, like when we go for a place in a camp, how you will make a, a tent? You will train yourself. Something similar, they are doing it. And similarly, the supplies also, they will carry it there. Parallelly, in situ, is it possible to build the house? I think already even IIT, Chennai itself, group of students are doing there. Across the globe, also people are doing. And similarly, as previously I told, is it possible to uh, have a yeah, uh, uh, vegetation there? Okay, that, that means you grow the vegetables there and you will able to eat there, that, that place. That, that experiment is also going on there. So these are all when it, until that all mature, so that they can self-sustain on their own. Their sure. own habitat, their own living system, their own, until then, supplies have to go from the earth. 
okay but they will keep evolve over the years in then the next stage is they will able to assemble the systems there so that rocket can come back to earth so that is a further step will happen to start with they must be able to live on their own what is happening to antarctica mm -hmm. today antarctica you look at here for nearly more than a decade people across the globe various countries people are living from indian we also are living there but today supplies are going there sure okay but slowly some way hard way we can do they are trying to see that and better than that we can do in mars okay we cultivating something in antarctica is very tough but mars i think is not totally ruled out so that way i i feel maintaining an antarctica station compared to that maintaining a human is more process, hospitable uh, more, more compared to that i think better better you know dr ranadhar i have to ask you this question and everyone wants to know about ufos is it a thing is it imagination i mean there have been numerous accounts of people sighting ufos and being kidnapped by aliens is there some truth is it fiction no, no, is yes, it hallucination no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes of no what all heard looks like that it is not it is not it's not reality but one thing is we cannot totally rule out also yes of no what all have been reported have been seen and uh, as of now we are not able to see this is when this has come from outside as of now but uh, we cannot totally rule out because once upon a time we told water um, uh, water is not water is not there on the moon but now we have discovery of water on the moon we have seen that we have seen exoplanets exoplanets possibility of life we are question marks is slowly getting out coming out if that which these things connecting together if it happens in somewhere else earth like environment how the human got evolved here life has come and life has become human similar opportunities uh, elsewhere also looks possible the probability still exists so yes of no we have not seen them doesn't mean they don't exist dr anadurai thank you so much for taking time out and speaking with us on a whole range of issues which normally we would not have got a chance to talk about so grateful for your time sir thank you thank you thank you for your efforts thank you all the best thank you sir Thank <laughs> you.